Amanda Bobbitt here, and today I'm so excited. I have a gentleman that I'm so honored to be able to interview, Dr. Hortz Filzer. Now, Dr. Hortz Filzer is the medical advisor behind Enagic. And so, Dr. Filzer, would you mind telling me a little bit of background and where you came from, how you got into Enagic, and um, your education? Well, let's say I'm an immigrant to this country. I was born in Poland and lived in Germany until I was 16 and then arrived in Fargo, North Dakota, of all places, which was quite the culture shock, but uh, I graduated from college in North Dakota, University of North Dakota, and went to medical school in Boston at Harvard. And basically, once I started there, I did my internship and residency there, my fellowship there, and uh, I did uh, serve for two years in the Republic of Vietnam. And when I finished uh, in 1970, I became the assistant director of the Department of Surgery at the Cambridge Hospital and basically stayed there my entire surgical career until I was 65, which was uh, a few years ago, and retired. And uh, I had uh, bought some property in Arizona, northern Arizona, and decided to retire there. And as soon as I retired, I found out that it's not what it's cracked up to be. <laughs> and, uh, I was restless, so I went back and practiced surgery in Bullhead City in the area for about three years, and then uh, actually for health reasons. I had a disc in my neck and uh, stuff. I stopped doing surgery, and I now am a wound care doctor. I'm the director of the Wound Care Center for Western Arizona Regional Medical Center. And I came upon Kangen water quite by accident. I had done uh, an aortic aneurysm operation on a man who turned out to be at the University of North Dakota the same year I was. I didn't know him, but we sort of had a bond. And he lived in Las Vegas. I wanted him to stay in the area for a few days after the surgery. So I let him stay at my house. And he brought this machine my house and I said, what the hell is this? <laughs> and he hooked it up and he gave me some of that water to drink. And not being really into water, it amazed me. It had a different feel to it. It had a different mouth feel. It, it uh, went down easier. It also didn't seem to bloat. A person could drink quite a large volume of it. And so I inquired about it. The rest is kind of history. I got interested in it because I could see that it had an, an effect. Uh, I didn't know anything about it over the long term, all, but I bought a machine. And uh, not with the intention to be a salesperson or anything like that, but uh, I met several people. They said, well, Doc, you know, you ought to maybe make a DVD or something to see. Uh, you know, that you can convince other people to use the machine, buy the machine. So I did. And much to my surprise, people liked it. And uh, then I went, I met Fred, I think, about then, about 2008, 2009, and went to one of the CYL meetings. And then they asked me if I would be interested to be the medical advisor. They had Dr. Shinya, who actually is an international famous surgeon, and I actually knew him uh, as their advisor, and uh, they said, well, gee, it'd be great company, you know, I mean, highly respected man. Mm -hmm. And that's what I've been doing ever since for Enagic, but I still work full time as a wound care doctor, and I actually like it very much. Awesome. Well, we definitely appreciate everything you do in Enagic and for the, the community and the world as well. So thank you for that. So today I've got some questions that I want to ask Dr. Filzer. And so the first question um, that we get from a lot of people would be, how does Kangen water affect the pH of the stomach? It actually doesn't. It doesn't? No. Look, the pH of the stomach at rest is around 3.5 to 4. There's virtually no free acid in the resting stomach because the resting stomach is covered with a mucus coating, and it takes certain stimuli for the stomach to secrete acid, the most powerful of which is meat and 
alcohol is a powerful stimulus. When you put that in your stomach, the stomach secretes acid. If you drink water, Kangen water or any water, it will not create an acid response because that's just not necessary. Right? It doesn't have to digest anything. Also, Kangen water is uh, much more absorbed in the antrum than ordinary water, so it's actually absorbed from the stomach. So when you drink a glass of Kangen water, that goes right into your bloodstream uh, and uh, is absorbed, you know, that way with virtually no change in the pH. Wow. So would you say it'd be better for you to drink water on an empty stomach then to get the full benefits? Yeah, I think uh, if you are, have mix it with a meal and so on, then of course, of necessity, there's acid in the stomach. And certainly if there's a high acid level, remember, uh, the uh, Kangen water is not a stable compound, so it doesn't take very much to neutralize it, not very much acid. So generally, it's best to drink it you know, on an empty stomach. Well, great, thank you for clearing that up. So a lot of people, when you go online, there's um, some so-called experts online that say, oh, you've gotta be careful, you're gonna get too alkaline from drinking that water. It could throw your whole body's pH off balance. So can you speak a little bit on that regards? Okay, let's uh, talk about the uh, osmolality or the concentration of sodium specifically in the plasma. It's around 140 milliequivalents of sodium. Okay. Tap water, and then again, Kangen water, almost never reaches 100 milliequivalents. So the water you drink is hypotonic, in other words, has less concentration of sodium than your plasma. So the more you drink of that, the more you're likely to dilute your plasma or serum sodium. When that reaches around 120 milliequivalents, symptoms and problems appear. Cardiac instability and arrhythmia, seizure disorders, and you can actually kill yourself with it. Water intoxication, that's what it is called. So before your pH would even change remotely, you'd be dead of water intoxication, uh, you know. Right. Without any alteration to the pH. Also remember that your lungs and your kidneys can concentrate urine or exhale extra CO2 so that the pH balance is, is maintained. Okay, and some people will say, well, what about the blood pH? Well, the blood pH is one of our most tightly regulated uh, parameters, okay? And uh, because Kangen water has a pH uh, balancing property through its ORP and its electrical activity, it can neutralize or reduce acidic pH. But to make it alkaline, it never gets quite up that high. It just uh, hasn't got that ability because the body can blow off the carbon dioxide or concentrate the pH uh, through the urine. Um, the other thing is, Kangen water is unstable. From the moment you get it into your glass, it starts to decay in electrical activity. That's why it's best drunk right out of the machine. Mm -hmm. It will last for a couple of days or so, but the ORP will drop steadily, and then of course you lose the benefit. Uh, but in some respects, that is a good thing. Uh, for example, in my wound care practice, I use uh, strong acidic water. Now, when I put that on a wound, it won't do any tissue damage. It'll kill all the germs on the surface, mm. but it won't do any tissue damage. Whereas a compound like Dakin solution, which is a hypochlorous acid, over time will do tissue damage and uh, really be a problem. You can't use it for over a long period of time. Wow, very smart man we have here. What's the difference between alkaline and alkalized water? There's some confusion when people go out on the internet, I feel, about the two differences there. Well, alkaline water is a stable, buffered water. It has no electrical activity. Well, it has some, it's minimal. very minor, minimal. And uh, as such, it is buffered internally, and so it requires equivalent amounts of acid to change the pH. Uh, alkalized is produced by the electric current. It is just what we're talking about, the unstable. Okay. okay. 
Is it possible that if someone were to make their own alkaline water, let's say they put a lot of baking soda or other forms of chemicals in their water, could they in fact become too alkaline from that type of water? Yes. Yes. There used to be a thing called the milk alkali syndrome in the days when peptic ulcers were treated with antacids and with milk and cream, so-called sippy diet, before we had uh, H2 blockers and other Proton, uh, proton pump inhibitors and so on to reduce acid. And people would be taking huge amounts of calcium carbonate and all kinds of uh, uh, alkali. And the next thing you know, their pH would cr creep up to 7.6. Uh, they got into trouble. Wow. Yeah. And so because this is alkali, for electricity, we're not adding things. There's no um, concern about over, over alkaline in Correct. the body. Correct. Exactly. Awesome. Great. And Women that are pregnant, I know when I went through my two pregnancies, um, I had such a benefit from drinking the water. Um, is, it, is it okay if pregnant women drink common water? Well, you just told us. I know, mm -hmm. but we have the medical advisor here. Oh, well, absolutely. There's awesome. no, no downside to that. I'm a, you know, we, we sort of say infants uh, don't need it because they are so perfect, and their metabolism is, is governed by these huge factors, maternal factors, immune factors they get from the mother, and so on. Uh, they, by the time they get to be toddlers, maybe then they might benefit, but it would be, it would be unnecessary before that. And again, once they walk around, once they're active, there's no downside to getting them the water. Awesome. Good. Kidney issues. Some people are going to be taking di uh, diuretics. Or maybe they have uh, one kidney that's not functioning. Uh, is it okay for them to drink the common water? You must remember that most of all, kind of water is water, okay? And everybody needs to drink water. People with kidney issues, specifically chronic kidney failure, like you know, there's five stages of it, where you start having slight impairment of your kidney function to the point where you can't have a, any function kidney residue at all. And here the caveat is that you have to watch your volume. A sick kidney with a low glomerular filtration rate can only filter so much urine. So if you overpower the uh, filtration rate with an excessive amount of fluid, you're gonna get into trouble, you're gonna get into heart failure and so on. So it's not the water, it's the volume. Right. People on dialysis can drink common water. In fact, there's a pretty good theoretical benefit actually not theoretical, a real benefit, because the water is uh, able to adjust pH. Chronically acidic people, like in renal failure, benefit from that, and it improves their sort of general sense of well-being. It doesn't cure the disease, but it, it makes them a little better. In some places, they have been using uh, ionized alkaline water in the dialysis bath, Mm. in conjunction with the minerals that get put in there to dialyze people and they seem to get better dialysis ones for the patients with that. Wow, that would be fantastic if we had something in, in the U.S. Mm -hmm. that was doing that. All right, what about the benefits of people that are on chemotherapy? Well, uh, I want to make it clear, I am not saying that condom water has a direct benefit on chemotherapy, per se. However, there used to be this business that because uh, antioxidants shouldn't be used and so on, that people would dissuade people on chemo from drinking candy water, and that's patently false. Those studies have been done. You can take antioxidants and not affect chemotherapy. I have found empirically, I have a large number of patients, primarily women, because uh, we have a fairly active uh, cancer center where I work, and we have a lot of breast cancer. And these ladies, in, depending upon what stage they have, they may get chemo, they may get radiation, they may get both. Now, when you uh, give these folks candid water steadily every day, and they drink it, they have less nausea, vomiting, and side effects from the chemo. And this is, I haven't done a formal study, but this has been told to me by innumerable patients. And so again, there's no downside to it. You've got to drink something. 
why not drink something that make, make you feel better? And then on the radiation side, I see a lot of women who are fair skinned. And the fairer your skin is, it's just like the sun. You should go out the sun. Radiation affects you. When they come in, they have these burns on the chest that are painful, sometimes even blisters. Mm -hmm. You take that strong alkaline water, 11.5 pH, okay. I put a towel on it, put, put it on the chest wall. It's amazing how, how quickly it relieves the discomfort. And they can go on and tolerate and finish their course, whereas otherwise they might not get the full benefit of the radiation. Wow, that's powerful. What about people with inflammation in their bodies? A lot of people, maybe they have the itises, the uh, arthritis, brucitis, tendonitis, those type of things. I've noticed just from giving out the water that these people get a tremendous benefit. Can you explain why that might be? Well, we have recently, uh, on behalf of Canagic USA, done some studies. First, in tissue culture, human red cells and human white cell tissue culture, and have demonstrated there is indeed a significant antioxidant effect to the water. One of the problems with prior uh, claims about that was that we couldn't prove it because there were limits to the testing modalities. Consequently, I was able to find a laboratory that had a unique proprietary test and was able to test the water in a, a tissue culture medium and prove that there's not only an antioxidant effect, but the inflammatory response of neutrophils is subdued by the water. So it's decreased. So you have antioxidant, which is good against inflammation, and you have a reduction of the actual inflammatory response, which is another benefit. So, you know, we need to do actual studies on people and prove that it, in fact, it does. But from what we know now, there's no question it has antioxidant and anti-inflammatory done a study with uh, 13 participants who were exercised uh, heavily while drinking regular water over a three-week period and then drinking kind of water over a three-week period, period. Sorry, And we found that in the group with the kind of water, they had an elevation of the red blood cell count when they were drinking the water and were subjected to stress, i.e. exercise stress, okay? And then at the same time, they uh, uh, would have an increase in the oxygen carrying capacity, right? Because the more red cells, the more hemoglobin is in circulation, the more oxygen can bind to it. And we also found that their white blood cell count is depressed mm -hmm. over the regular water group, which means there are not as many inflammatory cells out there in the periphery to lodge onto a joint or to a nerve or to a ligament and cause discomfort and so on and inflammation. And that also uh, has been sort of proven in the subjective response of these people. The ones that drank the kangen water, well they all drank the kangen water at some point, but they found that with the kangen water, their recovery from the stress is of exercise was quicker and their overall discomfort during exercise was less and those are psychometric tests but they're valid I mean they, they've been proven by uh, as, as appropriate by the literature so I think this is a beginning we have plans to uh, test about 30 or so cytokines which are messengers within the cell that can uh, help the immune response can help subdue inflammation, and in some cases cause it, but we want to know who does what and with which and to whom. You know? wow. When you do research Kangen water, there's one site in particular, it's a Chem 1, it's this gentleman, snake oil on tap, and I feel like I've lost a lot of people to that internet and this gentleman making very untrue claims out there on this water. Can Do you know what one I'm talking about out there and, and what he's yeah, saying? Yeah, I don't want to insult anybody, but uh, the man is a dope, you know. Uh, what he, the claims he's making, he starts out by saying, water cannot be ionized. Well, look, yes, H2O, 100% pure, 
distilled water can't be ionized. Actually, what happens when you pass an electric current, you get hydrogen and oxygen. But there is no such thing as that kind of water on the planet. All water has minerals, and seawater has you know, a horrendous amount, but fresh water even, and so therefore it can be ionized. And minimal amounts of hydrogen uh, are produced, but uh, the main thing is that you've got a lot of negative and positive ions floating around whichever end of the electrode you're on. You know. So he's really... Um well, uh, you know, I, I don't want to get the, the name calling and stuff, but suffice it to say, he got fired from his university post. Well, that's good to know. Thank you for clearing that up. Well, thank you, Dr. Feltzer, for being with, with me today. Um, I'm, I'm excited for everybody to see this, um, this video here, add some more value to people's lives. So thank you again, Dr. Feltzer. Appreciate you. My pleasure.